Hi guys, it's uh, coming up to 11.30 at night. It's Sunday, the 11th of uh, December. Soon be Christmas. And uh, I am absolutely shattered. It's been quite a hectic couple of days. Um, my brother and his friend have been excellent, bless them. A great help in uh, moving mum and stepdad to the new bungalow. Uh, which is about the same distance from the, me where I am now as they were at the old house. So, uh, I think uh, about 99.9% .9 of the stuff is out of the house. There's just a few bits that can go in the car, a few bits in the garden. Um, that can be grabbed another day. Uh, there's not actually a lot in the garden. Just a few garden tools in the shed, the lawnmower. I don't know if they want the patio set. No one said anything about it. Uh, but yeah. Pretty much all the important stuff is over at the new house. Um, we did all the boxes and the fish tank and some furniture yesterday and today was pretty much the um, large electrical appliances like the washing machine, clothes dryer, dishwasher, fridge freezer etc. Um, then stepdad went and picked up another, a wardrobe they'd won on eBay and a new sofa and two armchairs um, as well as moved everything else from the house so yeah <laughs> I wired the cooker in I plumbed the washing machine in uh, we did have to remove one base cupboard to get the dishwasher in and the tumble dryer was going to go out in the wooden shed, which would have meant me getting electric to the shed. But uh, my stepdad suggested putting it in the kitchen, as it is actually big enough, we can stand it up the corner. So mum's going to go with that idea. There, you need to trim my whiskers. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I don't even have to do that now. But for some reason, they've got no TV when they plug the aerial in. But... I did think that they may have to run the retune on the TVs because they might be on a different transmitter. Although I don't know where they are. It's a might. It's worth a try. Next time I'm over I'll have a play if they haven't got it working. But there's outlets on the wall like I've got here but there's just... They don't seem to be getting a signal so I will at some point shimmy into the attic and uh, have a look and see if I can find an issue up there maybe something's not connected maybe something got accidentally disconnected who knows because uh, I got the shimmy up there to add an antenna cable into my mum's bedroom anyway for their TV so Ooh, pardon me unless they used a portable one that Biggles kindly gave them then it means I wouldn't need to add an extra antenna cable, unless they want me to, of course. So, um, I don't think I'll be going to Mum's tomorrow. I think, as I've been discussing with, um, yeah, I'll call him a new friend. On, um, I consider him a friend. An online friend, anyway. <laughs> he lives a bit too far away to actually be a friend I could hang out with, but... So, online friend, you know, someone... We share the same interests. He likes to collect barricade lamps and traffic cones, and... So do I. <laughs> um, 
but I really do need to get into my shed because I can't even get a bike at the minute out of my shed. I've been walking to the shops. Uh, and one of the bikes I've got access to, even though it's an old three speed, I had to cut the bloody cable to get the wheel out to get it in the car. So I've got to put a new three speed cable on it. It's all because the adjuster for the that the cable connects to had seized onto the toggle chain. I can't get it to undo. And I've tried pliers and all sorts, it just will not unscrew, so new toggle chain as well, unfortunately. Or an indicator pin is what it's known as in America. But uh, yeah, so I've got stuff here that I need to do. I need to get in there and sort that shit out. See if I can um, stack the wheels up the back better. So, so they're not right at the front and so I can get a, my bike out of the shed. And only have to move one kid's bike and the trailer. That's what I want to do. And I might actually just empty the whole shed out. And take the camera down. So I can actually take a few photos of a few things to share on the Facebook group of mine. Um, not mine, the Facebook group I'm on. It's called Barricade Lantern Collectors, I believe. Uh, I've pretty much everything that I've got in there. Uh, I've got all sorts in there. I tagged in an album. Don't tag me unless it's interesting. Oh my god, I really should take this camera over to the new place. I don't understand it. Where Mum's now moved to, it's a big housing estate being built by a well-known company, Hopkins Homes. Um, they've built private houses to sell and pretty much up one corner mum's called it council corner because it is, it's pretty much in this corner of the um, estate they're building it's just for the housing association you know, where the poor would be housed but the quality difference is amazing um but the thing that actually stands out to me is the piss poor landscaping. Um, obviously, because I've laid turf, they put a sign up saying keep off the grass because it needs to settle and take root and whatnot. Um, but, one, around these um, housing authority bungalows and houses, the ground wasn't levelled before they laid the turf, so it was already like that, you know. We had quite a bit of rain yesterday evening. And this morning, there's just areas that have sunk. It's gotten so soft, you can't actually stand on it now because it is far too soft. I walked on it fine yesterday before it rained to go and check one of the meters. Because we couldn't get the heating to work so I went and checked the gas meter to make sure nothing had been turned off or you know something had gone wrong with the gas meter but that was working fine and it was solid to walk on you couldn't do it today after that rain and even a drain cover in the back lawn has sunk on one side considerably and the same out front on the grass there it is shit and then you'll go around the corner and you'll look at the turf laid on the houses that are being built to be sold. And it's a hell of a lot better. <laughs> it's almost like, oh, it's a council house. We don't give a fuck about quality. We'll just... I mean, to get the dishwasher in, we had to take out one of the um, base cupboards. 
and when we took the kickboard off the bottom not only was it not cut properly to fit the floor layers had shoved all their rubbish underneath it they hadn't picked it up and put it in a bin all their um, welding strips as stepdad called it what they used to seal the joints were all just swept underneath these cabinets and then the kickboards put back on I said to mum, I said, that is pretty bad that workmen would do that. Uh, when I was an electrician's mate with um, Michael Wright Electrical, way back in the day, <laughs> um, I was always taught by him, the boss, Michael, and obviously my other co colleagues that, you know, we always clean up our mess afterwards. Always. Even if the customer said, that's okay, I'll hoover up behind you. You hoover up. You know, you clean up your mess. We were always taught to do that. And, uh, I think they even said that when I did a stint at college on electrical installations. Which I actually wish I didn't drop out of. Um, I don't actually know why I dropped out of it. I didn't know I had autism back then. Maybe if I did, I could have got the help to deal with the stress of it, I suppose, and the stress of travelling and whatnot a lot better than I was back then. I think if I actually retook the course now, I could stick it out, I think. But... Uh, I think it was actually, you know, the theory, the written stuff that was uh, getting to me. Because I suck at maths. You know, I can't sit there and work out what fuse to put in something. I already know what sort of appliance is going to need what sort of fuse in the plug. Or what circuits need circuit, you know, what sort of rate, amp rated circuit breaker they need. But, uh, of course, when you're doing college, you need to show you can actually work it out. Or you used to. I'm going back to 2001, so I'm going back quite a long time. It may have changed considerably since then. The theory part of it may have changed considerably. Yeah, may have changed considerably since then. So yeah, if I had the cash to pay for the course, I would go back. Well, that's the other thing. Courses like that cost money. Money I don't have. Actually, that reminds me, I watched a video on YouTube last night. Um, from the electrical engineer, I suppose, would be his job description. I'm not actually sure what his job description is, but I'm presuming that's what it would be. Something like that. And uh, I didn't know, but you don't have to be qualified in anything to do what we call PAT testing over here, which is portable appliance testing. Um, because any second-hand electrical goods that are being sold in shops... Even technically at, you know, car boot sales, we are supposed to get them tested, but no one ever does at car boot sales. But in theory, you are. <laughs> um, but if a charity shop was selling electrical goods, or another shop that sold used electrical goods, they would have to get everything pat tested. Um, it doesn't guarantee the item works. <laughs> it just says it's safe to use. That, you know, you can plug it in and it's not going to blow up. It's not going to give you an electric shock. <laughs> and all a PAT test entails is a visual look over. So you, if it's... You check the power cable for damage. Um, you check the plugs wired correctly. Check it's got the correct size fuse in the plug. Check the actual device itself and make sure it's not damaged in any way that could make it dangerous. 
and then you'll have a little pat test machine that you just plug it in and it will do what it calls an insulation test and make sure that the live and neutral and earth are not leaking to each other which would of course cause problems it'll go bang or it'll trip out the switch at the very least so it's as simple as that if if you can do that you can pat test <laughs> I could if I actually went out and got the machine to pat test I could actually do pat testing and charge for it although I have got a lamp over there and I have idle curiosity because I got it from a charity shop it did have the past sticker on it they put a little sticker on the plug usually to say it's passed its test and it'll give you the date when it was tested the date when it's the next test is due because you're supposed to do it every year especially if you have an office if you're running an office or a business you are supposed to get your electrical stuff tested every year um, the signature of the person that tested it and on the stickers on my thing the size fuse it's got in the plug it said 3 amp so I thought I don't know I'm just going to double check that because mistakes can be made I pop the cover off the plug because it's a sealed plug and lo and behold it had a 13 amp fuse in it but I'm going to let the person off just because they may have just looked in, saw the three, and thought, oh well, that's a three amp fuse, bonk, and put the thing back in. Especially if they were doing it in a hurry, they may have been having, you know, an off day. They may not have looked for it. Who knows why, but... It's not a problem. I've got shitloads of fuses, so I just stuck a three amp in it. But the rest of it is okay, I mean, the cables aren't damaged or anything, so... <sighs> right, I'm going to shut the video off. So it's not going to be long before I piss off to bed before I fall asleep in my chair. I'm expecting two parcels tomorrow. Yay, I hope. Oh, just before I go, the Viking bike, I have. I had a message today of someone interested asking if I would accept 30 quid. I know it's a £15 drop in the asking price because I put it up for um, 4 45 but at the end of the day they are the only people who have shown true interest in the bike and I need the space in the shed quite desperately um, if it weren't for those two factors I would have said no but I really do need to get rid of it and the extra little bit of cash isn't going to hurt either. So, it's not really what I'd want. I'd have rather have taken 35. Maybe I should have counter-offered and said 35, but never mind. I've accepted 30 now, so I can't do that. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to shut down. I haven't got up to walk around because I haven't got no pants on. <laughs> I've only got me boxes on because I had a bath. I don't think YouTubers would really want to see my bare legs. Anyway. Uh, tomorrow, I think, if the weather's fine, I'm going to start sorting out the shed. Make some room in there. <sighs> see if I can find a home for the bikes up the corner. If they're still there, if someone hasn't nicked them. And uh, that'll be that. So, again, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you, hopefully, tomorrow. Bye.